This episode of Critical Hit is being brought to you by Harry's. Harry's is so confident you're going to love their blades, they'll give you their trial shave set for free when you sign up at harrys.com slash critical hit. That's harrys.com slash critical hit. All you do is pay for shipping. Well, hello, everyone. We're going to get started into Urban Shadows in just one moment. But first, let us dive into that mailbag. This week's question is from Joy, who has a couple of questions. Hello, my name, name is Joy. Oh. I should have looked ahead. I'd like to start by saying I love Critical Hit. I'm on my third listening, and I've now started on the Major Spoilers podcast master network feed. Thank you for getting me addicted to pods of casting. Yes, I would highly recommend you check out our Major Spoilers podcast network master feed. I know it's a lot to say, but that's one place where you can get all of our shows in one location. There's probably a good seven plus seven to ten hours of original content being generated each week on that master feed that you can listen to in one glorious spot. I have a couple of questions, says Joy. I know that you've been busy, so I'll try to keep this brief. Number one, what are the exact words to the Hedgehog song that Rodrigo sang? As far as I can tell, uh, as far as I can make out, the lyrics are, and she goes through the lyrics, and they're so close. They're off by only one word, Joy. You're very close and figuring that out. If you go to Majorspoilers.com forward slash Hedgehog song, that's all one word, H-E-D-G-E-H-O-G-S-O-N-G, Hedgehog song, you can find all the lyrics there yourself or anyone else who wants to find out what the lyrics to the Hedgehog song were right there over at Majorspoilers.com slash Hedgehog song. Number two, do you know of any other good real play RPG heavy on the role play podcasts that aren't labeled as explicit on most of their episodes? I don't mind a little swearing now and then, but I think that swear words are overused and take away from the story when used as the description for everything. I really appreciate how you keep it to a minimum on Critical Hit but I found that isn't usually the case on other podcasts. Any help you could give me would be great. Thank you for your good work. Torque and Ket are the best. Oh, man, I don't know if I want to answer this question now. Just kidding. Uh, P.S. When are you going to wrap up that cliffhanger on Modern City? Okay, so there's actually three questions in here. Uh, question the last on Modern City. Uh, if you head over to patreon.com slash major spoilers, it's one of our far goals uh, coming up uh, down the down the pipe. It's uh, quite a ways down down the line, but we do have a goal that is coming up that I think all of you who are listening right now would be interested in. When we hit our $2,500 a month goal, you will be able to access Critical Hit a week early and ad-free via our Patreon RSS feed. We are just over $300 away from hitting our next goal, which I think is really attainable when we get more great Critical Hit fans out there going over to patreon.com slash major spoilers and signing up. When we get there, you will get critical hit a week early on that uh, exclusive RSS feed for the patrons. And uh, you'll be able to hear things um, before everyone else and ad free. That's a good deal. But uh, as far as modern city goes, that's another goal kind of uh, a ways away. I think it's, I think we're going to get there though. I think we can do it with your help in answer to your second question. I don't really know if I can help you out on that. I think I don't listen to a lot of other RPG podcasts for the same reason that you don't listen to those same podcasts. Um, if things get a little, I mean, I don't mind swearing. I mean, <laughs> driving home from, from work, uh, people will hear me curse up a storm. But uh, when I'm listening to entertainment and people are walking in and out of the room or kids are present or whatever, that kind of stuff kind of turns me off. So I try to keep that to a minimum. So I really don't have a podcast that I would recommend. However, go over to YouTube and check out the Nerdist channel, the Geek and Sundry YouTube channel, and check out the Critical Role podcast. That has been going on for a couple of years now. It has a lot of fans all the way around the world, and uh, I do believe that they try to keep that as clean as they possibly can. So you might want to go check that out. Maybe some of our listeners have some other podcasts that are not explicit that they could recommend. So that's the key word here, everyone. Non-explicit or clean should be the tag that we're looking for. Head over to Majorspoilers.com in the show notes for this episode. Share your clean or slash non-explicit RPG heavy on the role play podcast that you think Joy might enjoy. Let's make this a group effort. Everybody gather together and make this happen. I know we can do it. Thank you so much for your email, Joy. And listeners, if you have some questions for the Major Spoilers mailbag, just drop me an email, podcast at Majorspoilers.com. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll get the rest of the gang in to also answer some questions. Uh, so you might want to get your questions in now. Hurry. Don't wait. It is 2018, and I 
believe this may be the first time we have talked in 2018, and maybe you've set some goals. Maybe one of your resolutions this year is to be better with personal finances. And Harry's can save you money if you are a frequent shaver, maybe even $100 a year. Man, I hate going to the big box store and trying to buy new razors to shave my face. Harry's makes it so simple. You sign up over at harrys.com slash critical hit and you get their subscription service where blades are mailed to you. And these are high quality blades. We talked about this before. Jeff and Andy, two ordinary guys who were fed up getting charged an arm and a leg for razor blades. Again, saving money for that new year. They started Harry's to fix shaving. Harry's stripped out all the unnecessary features about the blades. You're not going to find vibrating handles. You're not going to find heated blades. You're not going to find the uh, the 15 lubricating strips, all that ridiculousness that you see on some of the other razor companies. And they deliver a perfect razor at an amazing affordable price. And you get a good shave too. I have been teaching some new classes down at the university this semester. And so I can't uh, get away with just shaving my face on Saturday morning. I have to shave multiple times a week. And I just love using the Harry's razor. I love the handles. I'll just come out and say it. That's the that's my favorite part of the Harry's razors is the cool colors that you get, how they fit in your hands. I like the grip on the uh, the more rubber handles. I, I, I love them. Harry's is so confident that you're going to love their blades as much as I do, that they're going to give you their trial shave set for free when you sign up at Harry's dot com slash critical hit. All you have to do is pay for shipping. So you can claim your free trial offer from Harry's today. It's a $13 value for free when you sign up. All you've got to do is cover that shipping cost. And in your trial set, you will get that razor handle that I've been raving about. You'll get those precision engineered blades with the lubricating strip and the trimmer blade. You'll get the rich lathering shave gel and you will get a travel blade cover. This is a great starter set. Trust me, I've had many of these over the years that Harry's has shipped me. I use them all. Sometimes I'll give them to a friend and say, hey, have you tried Harry's yet? Check out this razor. And you can get one, too. You can get it for free and set up your free trial at harrys.com slash critical hit. Go there right now. That's harrys.com slash critical hit. Thank you, Harry's, for sponsoring this episode of Critical Hit. Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you for downloading and checking us out this week. We are back in the action and uh, Brian, I think, um, are we just picking up on the next day or, or what's going on here this week? Uh, I think uh, some time passes, uh, things go pretty uneventful, and I think we'll uh, open on Friday. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, basically, Deo gets in touch with uh, Professor Higgins Bottoms, mm -hmm. and he basically lets him know to uh, meet him the next day during the Goblin Market, uh, and uh, he'll uh, help set him up. All right, with a glamour. Yeah. He's got some ideas. All right. But uh, anyways, that evening, uh, the proxy has uh, made uh, plans to be uh, meeting his brother at Gela's. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I assume he uh, holds this appointment. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that. Uh, you're with Kevin uh, at Gela's, the uh, local brewery restaurant here in town. I order the fish. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Always a uh, risky move <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Well, There's maybe I'll order the catfish then. <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. Catfish. That's channel cats always available. Uh, yeah, so uh, Kevin's there. Uh, looks something uh, like the proxy, only a little bit uh, more dressed down, uh, somewhat scruffier, not uh, quite as toned. Eyes are blue instead of glowing green. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes are probably brown, but not glowing. Uh, and uh, so how's your week been? Oh, a lot, lot, a lot of traveling, but uh, um, it's it's actually been relatively quiet the last couple of days. Has it? Uh, been some news really going around. Uh, police have really been kind of up in arms. Oh yeah, by what? Oh man, there's just a uh, apparently some. Fights breaking out. Uh, there was this 
some kind of uh, gang activity over in lacrosse. Hmm. Well, I'll uh, I'll make sure to to drive carefully if I'm ever down that way. <laughs> yeah, sounds like uh, that sounds pretty crazy. It, I don't know. Was it, it was was it like drug related or something? Uh, they're not sure. Uh, not a lot of information really seemed to come out there. Just uh. There was a lot of uh, shooting, and I don't know. Apparently, a couple people were dead. Oof. Yeah. Things have been well, crazy. Well, that just goes to show you end up in a small town, and you assume it's going to be all picket fences and barbecues, but this stuff is everywhere. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, and things have just been really weird recently. Oh, yeah? How so? <laughs> well, uh, you know. You've, you've been different. Ah, well, yeah, a little different. I guess. Well, uh, are, are you concerned about it? Uh, I am a bit concerned. All right, well, what are you concerned about? I don't know. It just things seem weird. Uh, i still not quite sure what went on there that night. Uh, and that's not something people usually come back from. True. And uh, I do have you to thank for that. But, you know, it's kind of one day at a time. Things are a little weird. Things are a little different. But... Uh, I feel fine. And really, if anything, it's uh, sort of revitalized my uh, my drive to get everything worked out here with the company and um, see if we can't uh, get a promotion and maybe make our way out of here to someplace a little calmer or a little more raucous, whatever you want. <laughs> uh-huh. Honestly, I'm not sure I, what I want at this point. Uh, ah, this place did seem to be pretty boring. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but you think you, you've been good? I mean, I have. I'm doing all right. Are you okay? I've been okay. I've just you know, been concerned. Uh, Anybody come and talk to you about anything? Uh, I mean, I've talked to some people. Uh I don't know. They people are willing to help if uh, there's anything you need help with. Oh, who who exactly has offered help? Uh, I just talked with this church group. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Temple of Eternal Light, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Apparently, they're on some kind of mission here in town. Mm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they, I don't know, uh, they expressed concern and, you know, wanted me to suggest that uh, if you want any help, we can talk to them. So, did did you approach them or did they approach you? Uh, I approached them. Uh, I see. Yeah, they, uh, well, I mean... You know, they came into the library and was uh, wanting some information and kind of got to talking and just I kind of started telling them about, our, you know, the situation I, you know, we were in. And uh, I well, say, you need to be careful because the Temple of Eternal Light sounds like a cult to me. <laughs> uh, they seemed all they... right. They might just want money or something else. So yeah. you just be careful. Don't, I mean, don't, uh, don't break off communication with them just, just in case. But, um, let me, let me do some looking around, you know, the transcendental meditation, uh, guys bought up that, uh, 
plot of land north of town. Um, and that turned out to be nothing. But if uh, it, it, it would still be good to, to look into these guys. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, like I say, they seem to be okay. And I mean, they really seem to be, you know, generally willing, wanting to help. Uh, yeah, very helpful. Yeah. yeah they, Charismatic. Yeah. Give you a pamphlet. Not so much. They just, you know, uh, said that, you know, if we, if they needed their, if we needed their help, all we had to do was ask. And they said they'd come help us. All right. Well, if it gets to that point, we might go ask them for help. But I think I'm doing okay right now. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess. If you're sure about that. Yeah. Are you doing okay? I, you seem worried. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just, you know, concerned. Well, I appreciate your concern. It's because of that that I'm kicking around, so I appreciate it. But also, um, you tend to dive in head first and... <laughs> I uh, I worry about that. So let's just take it step by step, okay? Fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, uh, things have been pretty quiet at work otherwise. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, trying to keep busy. Well, that's good. I, uh... I'm mostly busy I'm trying to find some space is actually a little hard, but it's good to have these outings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy uh, being able to spend some time with you. Uh, like I say, uh, things, I don't know, just seemed a bit distant. Well, work is work. Yeah. I can get that. Yeah. Hey, you ever get real concerned, you know, you can always call me, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can give you a call. Sure. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, how, how, how's the fish? Uh, well, the breading is fine. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just stick with the meatloaf. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> And yeah, dinner pretty much passes uneventfully from there. Okay. Um, can I ask you a question, Brian? Yeah. Is this uh, enough for an intimacy move? Ooh. Mm. Ooh. I think it might be. Uh, what's your intimacy move? When you share a moment of intimacy, physical or emotional, with another person, they give you a debt they hold on someone else. <gasps> oh. Oh. Mm. Who could he hold a debt on? <laughs> that nice Mr. Wolf from the Travel Bureau. <laughs> mm. yeah, I think uh, we'll go ahead and say that you can uh, <laughs> gain a debt uh, from uh, Karani Perek. Sham. <laughs> <laughs> Things could be interesting here. I'm not exactly sure how that all happens. <laughs> I uh, think uh, basically uh, if you actually want to call in a debt on them, you can just uh, leverage your brother's name more or less. Okay. And uh, use that. It's going to be harder for me to leave the room when my brother's around. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think we'll just, uh, <laughs> let you manage to, uh, squirrel in a debt from Karani and, uh, leave it at that. Uh, so yeah, like I say, uh, you, uh, spend the rest of the dinner, uh, making mostly, uh, small talk and it pretty much passes uneventfully from there. Do I, uh... For an intimacy move, do I get to mark anything? Yeah, you'd get to mark mortality or power. He's power. Hooray! 
<laughs> I advance. Ooh. Yay. What you going to advance to? I'm going to take the tainted move, cold as ice. Because <laughs> I'm willing to sacrifice our love. <laughs> um, Your tainted which is, love. Yes, it's going to give bam, me bam. plus one armor and make me immune to being stunned. Uh, no, it's not cold as ice. That's the one that gives me plus one blood. Hang on. I got it. I forgot what it is. It is tough as nails is what it is. Hmm. All right. So we all uh, <laughs> good there. Yep. All right. So uh, I'd say a short time later in the evening uh, at a local antique store. Uh, Alana is uh, working in her uh, workshop there. Door chimes. Uh, in walks in a uh, fey woman uh, who we've met before. Uh, tall, uh, curly, purple hair, uh, dark skin. Uh, this is uh, Leandra Sunhollow. Cool. I will uh, head out front and greet her. Uh, Leandra, what? Uh, how can I help you? Hey, Alana, uh, I just uh, kind of wanted to thank you uh, for uh, basically resolving the issues with Ethan. Uh, yeah, he's he done uh, caught a flight back, and the court's really happy to have that uh, resolved there. Glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, you uh, plan on being at the market tomorrow? Yeah. I would miss it. That's good. Uh, uh, we were actually wondering if uh, you'd want to do something for us. Oh, what's that? Uh, it's pretty big news. Uh, we've found out that the night court seems to be planning something. Apparently they're making a deal uh, with the Demon Council. Oh, that's yeah. not good. No, no, it's not. And yeah, we were hoping perhaps you could maybe see that that doesn't happen. Oh, oof. All right. Do you know, are they meeting with the proxy? I believe that's the case, yes. Uh, we at least believe that would be the most likely person who they'd be the mediator there. All right. And when you say make sure the deal doesn't happen, like, do you want me to make sure he's indisposed or make uh, sure their ambassador is indisposed or what? Whatever you think uh, would be the best way that that doesn't go through. Uh, uh, I mean, I figure, you know, I guess what level of violence and deniability are you looking for here <laughs> and what kind of support are you offering? Well, we're definitely wanting uh, deniability. That's okay. why we're, that's why you've come to me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. As for support, I mean, it's not much. Uh, I mean, violence may be difficult. Uh, you know, any violence at the goblin market is seen that, that that can cause problems. Are there actual geshes involved, or is it just uh, don't cause a scene? Well, there's definitely geshes. Uh, if uh, I mean. I definitely would try to keep your involvement uh, in any meddling under wraps, if at all possible. Uh, that could seriously uh, become a black mark on you, and the night court would probably want to repay any insults. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. I mean... It does come down to it. I mean, I guess make sure that you're ready to leave. 
the market. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, then I guess any intel you can give me on the situation at the market is going to make this a lot easier. And anything you know about who the night court's sending, where he's going to be meeting. Yeah, it sounds like uh, the point person on their end is named Vicente. Okay. Uh, yeah, he is supposed to meet uh, deep in the heart of the market in the uh, night courts uh, in their mead hall. The night courts mead hall? Yes. <sighs> That's going to be harder to deal with. So I guess the, the best bet would try to be to make sure that one or the other doesn't actually show up to the meet. That'd probably be best. Okay. Um, what do you know about Vicente? Not a lot. Uh, he seems to be some kind of mover and shaker. Uh, I believe he'd probably be some kind of lieutenant within their organization. Uh, I don't know. They do really like to keep their structure clouded. I just, do you know what they're hoping to get from this deal? Apparently they got some uh, information on the day court, and it could be problematic. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. I've got some ideas. Um... Do you know what time this meet is supposed to happen? I believe uh, talks were at 3 tomorrow. 3 a.m. or 3 p.m.? P.m. In the afternoon Sorry. during market hours. This is quite the ask. Um, I've been trying to avoid directly crossing the proxy while I was here. Mm, I can understand that. Uh, I mean, we definitely consider you square with us. I thought I was square with you guys for getting Ethan back on that plane. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> you definitely, uh, well, was quite a bit with, uh, previous issues that Ethan's dragged us into or dragged you into. Oh, lovely. All right, well, I will honor the debt then. <sighs> it is very much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you can think of anything that we can do without, you know, direct interference, let us know. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the proxy's weak point is his brother. Uh, if you can get his brother into some sort of trouble, he can. You might be able to get him to miss the meat. We can definitely look into that. Um, I mean, I have lovers I can pull to do that, but if you, uh, I don't know. The the question is basically how best to do that. He's a novice mage. Hmm. Like I said, I've got some ideas, but um, but that's going to be the best best button to push on. Um, hmm. The uh, market's not going to cause any disruption to cell phone service, right? Not until you're within it. Oh, well, hmm. is there any way to make that not true? Because so ideally we'd want to cause this crisis right as we're having the meeting. And then if the proxy shows up early to the meeting and can't get word from his brother that he's in trouble, that plan is going to fail. Yeah, that could be problematic. Uh, no, unfortunately... It's going to be 
well into Fay territory where this is happening. Uh, Can you have someone at the market track his movements and send a message to me through maybe magical means? Yeah, we can do that. All right. I'll just need to know when he shows up. Um, And I'll try to monitor him. That's dicey. I can see about monitoring him ahead of time. Um, Though, again, if you've got anyone, it'll be easier at the market, presumably, than if you are monitoring him on this side. Um, Since you don't want exposure. I can figure out someone who can monitor him on this side. Okay. Um, we'll be in touch, I guess. Sounds good. Uh, this is very much appreciated. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Okay. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. I'm going to mark off that debt I owe the light court and mark <laughs> wild. Okay. Yikes. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> I forgot to ask for Sam's secret at the start of the session. Oh, do we? I wasn't going to remind you. Uh, uh, so, yeah, her secret is that the reason she has uh, tolerated Ethan for so long is that she does not do well alone. Aww. <laughs> that must be sad, what with having a dead brother and all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's back, so... Yeah, yeah but is he... No, everybody's brothers are monsters. <laughs> that is true. Uh, me uh, and the proxy's brother should just run off together based like on your brother our and monster. His brother should go out and go bowling. <laughs> you should not go bowling with anyone. He 100% should. I want him to show up at the bowling alley in Hayes. <laughs> I'm an excellent bowler. I can think of ten ways to burn this bowling alley to the ground. Vengeance upon every single pin. <laughs> <laughs> Hot dog prices are outrageous. I shall strike them down ten at a time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just I got that now? I can't, be- I can't believe they don't have that. Jurassic Park Arcade. <laughs> These nachos make me want to kill. Everything. Uh, to I'm going to gonna kill. call Karani. <laughs> okay. Hey, Alana. Hey. Yeah. I've got some uh, information for you. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a deal going down at the market tomorrow that you will be interested in. Oh, uh, how so? Well, it involves uh, the knight and demon courts becoming buddy-buddy. Ooh, uh, that could be certainly problematic. Uh, yep. Hmm. Do you, uh, what, uh, what all do you know about this? Uh, I know the time and the place and the... Uh, agents involved on both sides. Interesting. Well, uh, would you uh, be willing to provide this information? We can certainly uh, consider that. I would be happy to. All right. Uh, the uh, one of the agents, however, uh, has shown an ability to show up when talked about. So I should not uh, say his name unless outside of my, uh, I don't know how that works over the cell phone. So you might want to come here to my and stand in my wards while we talk about it. That's a good idea. Uh, yes, I can be over shortly. Okay. 
Yeah. So uh, <laughs> shortly thereafter, uh, Karani shows up at your door. Great. I'll let her in and go back to where I had the conversation with the uh, 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 lovely Faye. <laughs> um, say, uh, so yeah, the Faye in question is man or creature pay by the name of Vincente he's some some kind of lieutenant of the night court he's meeting at the mead hall with the proxy in all likelihood mm. at 3 p.m tomorrow the proxy okay i know you've met him yes uh we talked he wasn't too forthcoming but uh really wasn't expecting him to be uh, i guess we just wanted to let our presence be known what are your intentions towards him? Well, right now we're trying to see what his intentions are and see basically what kind of opportunities for redemption there may be here. Uh, <laughs> Seems optimistic. Very possibly. Um, I mean, you know, we don't have try to do anything too da- drastic unless the situation really calls for it. Fair. Uh, uh, there's been some uh, very strong demonic activity in the area. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what brings us here. And uh, we're still trying to see what role he is playing in this. Uh, Unfortunately, it looks like most of the individuals we've been running across with your help have been something of free agents. Yeah. My theory is that whatever he is doing here is weakening barriers, making summoning by amateurs easier or making it easier for demons to enter uh, when people just invoke their names. Yeah, it definitely seems like that's very possible. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, they should not be popping up as readily as they seem to be here. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is just going to get the locals in trouble. I've that, uh, kid you exercised is, uh, <laughs> studying true name magic from a professor who doesn't know what he's doing. <sighs> Who's this professor? Professor JD Higginsbottom, the <laughs> third. I see. Teaches lore at the university. Interesting. Uh, and you say he's not too knowledgeable? I mean, he's an occultist, but he doesn't actually have, uh, you know, our level of training. Uh, that is concerning. Yeah. We might have to talk with him when we have the opportunity. Yeah, well, he'll be at the market for sure. <laughs> well, if we're not too busy looking into other matters. <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's that was my question is how you want to play this. Um, my thought was the best idea was just to keep this meeting from happening uh, as opposed to trying to attack one agent or the other considering that there's probably, there's, you know, I don't want to run afoul of the night court or uh, any of their gashes. Oh, I mean, that... Fortunately, that would be pretty much an insult to all the courts there uh, if we yeah. unleash violence in the market. Uh, Which is why I was hoping to try to keep the proxy from arriving at the market or certainly to keep him from arriving at the Mead Hall if, uh, if he gets to the market ahead of time. Yeah, that uh, definitely makes sense. Uh, and that's certainly something we'll want to try. Uh Got any ideas how to do this? Yeah, I was thinking of trying to cause some kind of crisis involving his brother. And you'd be talking about Kevin? Yeah. And we've 
met with him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. uh, How'd that go? Uh, He seems pretty earnest in wanting to help his brother. Well. Unfortunately, I don't know what help the proxy would be willing to accept. Yeah. Yeah, Do you know anything more about their story? I I know the kid's got power and uh, the proxy is obviously got a lot of power. Um, Yeah. But I don't really know how that, how they play into each other. Apparently there is some vehicular accident. Uh, Mm. Apparently his brother was pretty much killed and uh, Kevin brought him back. Oh, oh, that never goes well. <laughs> no, I guess not. Uh, seems to be plenty of that going around here, too. Yeah, seriously. Me and Kevin should start a support group for <laughs> dead, creepy brothers. <sighs> yeah, um, I think, I mean, it, I don't think the situations are unrelated, but... And I think that uh, Chap may be the origin of these problems. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. That's actually really interesting. Uh, Huh. That that votes into some theories I have about Ian's issues as well. Um... Do you know when this when this happened? When did uh do you, how long the proxy's been this way? I believe it's been several months. Uh he's been working for a while to get the corporate presence here in Hayes. But- yeah, I wonder if uh his brother whew, really ripped a hole in the uh the veil <laughs> in that uh Ian could actually be somewhat of consequence of that. Uh, yeah, that's seems to be the case. All right, we should talk to him. Mm, to you, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, we can get in touch with him. Uh, I got his number. Oh, great. All right, we're going to want to wait on that. The less chap knows you're in contact with his brother the better he might get protective i would imagine so all right um i'm gonna do try to do as much prep as i can here Mm. then maybe we can give kevin a call see if he wants to meet tomorrow sounds like an idea Cool. All right. Uh, if you got any other stuff you I can do for you, let me know. Yeah, I'll be keeping in touch. Sounds good. See you tomorrow, then. Yeah, absolutely. I'll see you tomorrow. And she leaves. Does that mm-hmm. count as, I guess, sharing this information or working with her as cashing in one of my debts that I owe her? Yeah. Yeah, that is going to. Sweet. Passing along that information to her, providing information was going to free up one of the debts. One killer debt! Mark power, which means I advance. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, uh, know what you're picking there? Yes. I'm going to take, actually, the uh, take a play from another person's playbook. Ah. And uh, I will be taking from... uh, I believe it's the aware, yeah, uh, the aware expert marksman, <laughs> uh, which lets me unleash with mind instead of blood. Ah, when you unleash Fair with enough. a firearm only, though, isn't it? Yep. Hmm. I have a firearm. Yeah. Hmm. For her, she burns out her uh, channeling again. Yep. Exactly. I didn't want to be helpless again so. <laughs> and it's Always the difference of your sword rolling a crossbow yeah yep it's, and it's the difference of like rolling with a minus one versus a plus one that's pretty big all right 
Uh, so, uh, any other preparations that Alana will do this night? That's a really good question. Um, I don't know if, say, uh, either checking through my sanctum or like, oh, you know what? I didn't actually ask for, put a face to a name with, um, Vincente. Can I do that? Yeah. Cool. So that's roll wild. Yep. Roll wild. Nope. No. Ooh. Interesting. All right. Uh, on a miss, you don't know them or you owe them. Uh, I'm just going to say you don't know Vicente. Okay. Sounds good. The yep, dark court shadows are quite concealing. I'm trying to think. Uh, so, yeah, then I guess the other question is, I don't know if like there's anything from Sanctum or anything else I can do to research to try to get some more information on basically like what might – from the information I now know about the proxy, what I can <laughs> figure out about him, like, are there particular demons that are known to be, you know, likely to possess people who are dying? That's a good question. Uh, I would say with the information, uh, just trying to see, well, mm, yeah, not so much. I mean, you can uh, definitely get a number of demonic names but uh, not enough to really narrow it down to any particular entity okay i'm gonna say that generally if you want to try to find out more you'll probably have to uh, figure someone out in some direct interaction with them yeah i might try to hit the streets and get some more information on the proxy <laughs> oh, okay uh how are you uh gonna go about doing that well, I'm going to, he has been very, very active in Haze, so mm -hmm. I'm going to basically just go, uh, my Hit the Streets is going to be a fairly bureaucratic Hit the Streets, <laughs> where I go to, like, the, you know, town hall and look up, like, minutes involving Soul Soul and try to figure out what is going on here. Hmm, interesting. All right, uh, yeah, I think if you want to go ahead and uh, roll me a mortality... Oof. Nope, and I can't roll tonight. Ooh. So interesting. Yikes. That's better. <laughs> so by the end of the session you will be rolling uh you know, middling hits at least. <laughs> How do uh, I I need to like figure out a way to up my faction levels. <laughs> Again, well it looks like there's only like one way to do that. And that's you can, yeah, and that's uh, after and yeah, you can mm -hmm. level up specific moves, right? And that involves faction moves. Mm -hmm. Or not. Um, I think that's only after you've gotten f five advances. Yeah. yeah, I think And so. those are just basic moves, not the faction moves. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, leveling up the faction is a one-time thing after you've got five advances. And uh, there is the whole end of session thing where we can uh, reconfigure. Move them. One reconfigure. Up and, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, but I still probably wouldn't have done any reconfiguring. <laughs> right. Uh, all right, well. Yeah, I'm going to say. Sucks to suck. Yeah, you uh, kind of pour through some of the uh, public ledgers, and uh, he seems to do a pretty good job of uh, <laughs> covering his trail. And, yeah, I mean, you just don't get even hardly any mention of Chap Andrews or Soul Soul and their involvement outside of uh, just like zone registration for their headquarters. All right. Fair enough. That's probably my night then. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I think uh, unless does anyone else have uh, plans for tonight? If theoretically mm -hmm. someone who were a player yes. knew they needed some sort of interaction with, say, Wild, <laughs> <laughs> is there an in-character motivation for that? Or is that just something that I can go, you know what, in character, this is how I go and do this? Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Am I am I asking a stupid question or am I in? 
I like, think uh, for the most part, you'd have to come up with an end character reason if you don't have one as to why to interact with some wild. All right, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. I've heard about this goblin market. Mm-hmm. I've heard it's coming to town. It is. I believe that it may draw out people who need to die. <laughs> it might I do believe that. that the presence of those people vis-a-vis the whole dying uh, is probably a good thing for me because, you know, that, as you may have noticed, there's an evil giant cat whispering in my ear about how I need to kill them. <laughs> and so I think Ian is going to try and seek out somebody wild. Who would I know that might be wild? <laughs> yeah. Who do you You're know? not brother-in-law? Yeah, if he was in town still. Yeah. He left. They put uh, him on a plane <laughs> from the Hayes International Airport. Well, I mean, <laughs> technically, your uh, Damon is wild. I mean, <laughs> <gasps> oh, so I could make a deal with my demon. Do my you demon. um? Do you advance when you call in a debt? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I owe Ian something. So if he wanted to get some information from me, he could actually just call in one of the debts that I owe him. Would that yeah. allow me to advance, though? Yeah. If uh, you actually got... Uh, yeah, calling in or honoring a, or cashing in or honoring a debt is one of the advancement markers. Error. And I've... I have written here that I owe you two debts, so that that is what I have as well. I don't show any wild NPCs who you who Ian owns a okay. debt to, so uh, yeah. Other than the links, <laughs> so so but, if I call in a debt, does that mean that my marks currently in play disappear because I have advanced? Yeah, if you mark all four factions, then you. Right. I haven't marked all four factions. Yeah, although what a okay. So my question, my, my question is asking, will this allow me to mark that fourth faction or would this be something that would do the same thing as marking the fourth faction and just wipe out the three marks that I have? Well, technically you would mark that fourth one and right. then you would advance clearing out all four of the marks. Ooh. Then I believe it's time <laughs> to call in a debt. I know where the proxy lives, correct? I don't know if you do, but you have seen him be summoned before, I believe. Has your cat smelled him? Maybe you can track him. There's that. I shall hit the streets <laughs> with a demon cat. And try to and find a proxy? Yeah, this demon cat and I will be like, hey, look at us. We're a demon cat. And a revenant. You don't. You don't happen to have a phone, do you? <laughs> yeah, I do have that. I think we established. Yeah, that he has. Okay. Yeah, we. Then you'd have the proxy's the proxy's phone number. <laughs> I just didn't know if like. I didn't know if you were like no no phones just the, like I'm operating strictly on like 1987 principles here. <laughs> no phones, just justice. Go Features. on, go on, just walk away. In this early 2000 world, that yeah. is Hayes Kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the year 2017, which means in Hayes, it's 1998. Yeah. All right, so I don't have to hit the streets. I could just call him. Yeah. All right, well, you I'll can, call him. You can call him. Hey, you got a call coming from that Ian guy. We're listening. I need something from you. What is that? The Goblin Market. I need to know if Veronique will be there and how I can find her. Who is this person? She is one of the people on my call. She's probably the person who manipulated the person who stabbed me to death and made me come back from the dead, although maybe you made me come back from the dead. I'm really bad at expositionary dialogue out of character. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, does this, is this a name that rings a bell? 
No, I would say Veronique does not specifically ring a bell for you. This might be a thing we have to roll, actually. <laughs> but, uh, Ooh, does he name uh, to a face? Mm, well, I say you don't. Hmm. I think you actually have to have a face to put a name to. Oh, doesn't yeah. it work the other way around yeah. as well? Does it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, the move says put a face to a name, okay. or vice versa. Yeah, I'd say go ahead and uh, roll and see if you got a face to put that to that name. What am I rolling with? Mm, we'll say wild. Okay. From demonic connections and stuff. Yes. Face pudding. Partial <laughs> success. So <laughs> that means partial. on a hit, you know the reputation. The GM will uh, tell you what most people know about them. Uh, so I say with your uh, demonic connections, you do know that uh, there was a small group of uh, demonic uh, worshippers and uh, who have bound themselves to some demons themselves. Uh, Vronik would be one such individual who was basically the... Uh, sec- yeah, well, she was the second in charge of this particular small clique. And uh, she has managed to bind herself with a demon known as uh, Casdea. Oh, that sounds scary. And uh, they've been on radio silence for a while. Mm-hmm. But uh, no information as to whether... I just don't know their whereabouts or, or anything like that. No, I'd say they've been... Okay. Um, can I mark Wild for making a faction move? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So um, the proxy is quiet for a little bit. And then says, we do not know their current whereabouts, but Ian, you have been a steadfast ally so far. If you would like, we could get you into the goblin market and you could search her out yourself. Yes, I believe since that. we owe you yeah, since we owe you and all that should suffice very well. be at this address. I'll text you the address tomorrow. Uh, be there. We will go in together. I'll dress for success. <laughs> We are glad to hear you say that. I'll hang up. (laughs) I'll let you hang up. Okay. Everybody else gets to hang up first. So we'll uh, we'll cash that once I actually get you in. Okay. Fair enough. So when that cash is at that point, we do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that happens if... uh... (laughs) If any, unless anyone else has anything to throw in, we can probably move to the next day. Let's all go no to the new goblin. information from any of my contacts. Not at this time, no. Cool. I had sent Brett back to Great Bend, right? Yes, Brett right. has went back. Uh, <laughs> he has uh, been giving you some light contacts, but largely just. Uh, Saying that, you know, if they've been asking around, but hasn't been wanting to be too conspicuous, and he's kind of on the outs with how things went in lacrosse. As long as he keeps giving me information. Okay. Uh, I mean, he Cause lets you know, basically, you know, they just uh, got him running the streets, and <laughs> he's kind of got to get back into their good graces. All understandable. I just don't want to lose him like I lost Jake suddenly. (laughs) Yes. Jake's dead, right? As far as you know. Then, no, I'm good. All right. 
Okay, so next morning it is uh, Saturday. Saturday. Uh, a pretty uh, unseasonably warm uh, day for uh, getting into the uh, late fall here. Uh, sun uh, seems to be actually be coming out uh, pretty strongly. Uh, so I assume that uh, Professor Higginsbottom is uh, pretty eager for the day. Oh, yeah. He's there bright and early. He's uh, parked his car um, in an optimal spot in the parking lot <laughs> so that in case anything goes down, he can make a very quick escape <laughs> without uh, having to worry about clogged traffic out of the entrance. <laughs> very well. Yes. So you uh, park pretty close to the uh, entrance exit? Yeah, entrance exit area, yes. Yep. All right. Well, uh it doesn't take much for uh, Deo to spot you. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Professor. Uh, hey, so, uh, yeah, yeah, as uh, I've been saying, I, I kind of got an idea here. Ah, oh, Deo, uh, good. Yeah, uh, so I'm thinking that I don't know if I could really construct a glamour that they wouldn't be able to see through. Uh-huh. But I think if I just make a glamour of a glamour, just give them the idea that there's a glamour on you that doesn't actually change your appearance. <laughs> They'll just think it's that good of a glamour. Ah, uh, I see what you're I see what you're saying. Yes, yes. That makes perfect sense. And since I am my own disguise. Yeah. Perfect. And uh I also uh did uh managed to uh call in some uh favors uh i did also uh get you this mm. he uh hands you over a gold medallion uh has a crest on it okay uh yeah this is uh the crest of the uh day court uh hopefully this will uh, assuade any further or any questions that may rise up uh so uh, if you present that I-, I think you should be able to get through pretty hassle-free very good thank you dale thank you so much uh are you planning to yeah yeah i'll be in there i'll be around uh so yeah if you're you're wanting to check out the library there you're gonna want to go uh keep a Wittershins path uh just keep going around and you'll wind your way in very good uh, very good thank you thank you and um, I guess uh, he goes on his way. Yeah, yeah. And I'll go on my way. And uh, good, good luck, Professor. Thank you, Dale. And um, I guess I will go in. All right. So you go in. Uh, by uh, all appearances, it seems to be uh, this uh, pretty big uh, swap meet here. Uh, there's uh, as you walk into the fairgrounds, all sorts of uh, uh, lean tos and. Uh, Tents and booths set up, uh, people displaying their various uh, wares and various uh, bric-a-brac for sale and trade. Mm -hmm. I'll wander around looking for things that might interest me, maybe buy a little thing here, a little thing there, make it look like I'm not too eager to get exactly to where I want to go. But eventually I know that there is a section that is closed off to regular mortals and yep. uh i'll start to make my way over there yeah uh, you uh again i uh, just start kind of going uh this uh, counterclockwise direction around the market uh you know you just see a bunch of uh mostly old junk uh booth with a whole bunch of old license plates uh mm-hmm. just normal people as uh you continue to make your way around the air does kind of start uh shimmering and getting hazy uh, the uh, sky tends to get a magenta tinge to it as you make your way around. Uh, you do see uh, some individuals who uh, glance your way, and uh, seeing the medallion, they just kind of nod. And now, is this something I'm wearing around my neck, or something in my hand, or uh, how do you? You can um, do. You can wear it around your neck if you would like. Probably, seeing how I don't know how other people probably would do it, is is it on a big chain? It's on a chain. Then yeah, I probably yeah. kind of wrap it around my wrist to where it's kind of hanging off, uh, okay. off the sleeve, so that you know you can see it if you're looking. 
but it's not something that's standing out. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you uh, start making your way through uh, the tents and booths. Start getting a bit more elaborate and fanciful. Uh, start seeing some scarves. Uh, individuals start seeming a little bit more particular. Uh, a little bit uh, longer or shorter, or a uh, little bit more otter hairstyles and hair colors than what you often see around these Kansas parts. Uh, Okay. But uh, no sign of the library as of yet. No, nope. uh, you just uh, make your way through. Uh, you uh, get a few people uh, you know, uh, showing you wares and whatnot. Uh, mm-hmm. You got uh, an old lady who uh, has a very pointed face uh, showing you this uh, silver spoon that uh, she tells you will tarnish if uh, stirred in poison. And... Uh, you uh, make your way around. Uh, I might buy that little spoon. Might <laughs> you? I might. Never can tell when this might uh, be useful. Yeah, if you're interested, uh, you'll just need to have one uh, happy memory from your childhood. Ah, uh, one happy memory from my childhood. Very well. And I will share a memory. Oh, that's terrible. I will share a memory of my red rubber ball that I would play with on the sidewalk in front of my house as a young child. <laughs> Very nice. As you uh, did, describe, Did you that? play with it in like perfect synchronicity with all the other child- yes, children? Yes, all the house? other children. <laughs> they all bounced in synchronicity. In the year cool. 1970-80-90. <laughs> uh, no, you'd be thinking like uh, 19, we're talking like the 19, late 40s, early 50s. Um, how old is Professor Higgins? He's in his he's in his late seventies. Actually, he's seventy five years old. So you uh, tell her uh, about this uh, red rubber ball, and mm-hmm. eventually uh, you see her holding a red ball, and uh, she goes, "Yes, very nice, very nice." And she pulls out a little chest, uh, latch flips open as if. Uh, Having a spring locked uh, catch like on the uh, luggage, uh, mm-hmm. she opens it up and there's various little uh, knickknacks and toys and other assorted accoutrements. She places it gently in there and closes it. Fascinating, madam. Well, thank you. Take the spoon. I'll put it in my in my bag. And for those people who don't remember, my bag is a um, unassuming bag. Mm-hmm. Your bag disguises any signs and signals that an arcane item may emit. An arcane item placed in the bag is completely undetectable. I need to. Yeah, I guess I need to move on and try okay. to find this library. I don't know <laughs> if I need to use my arcane detective skills. Uh, I guess that only works when I'm interviewing a knowledgeable NPC. Yeah, um, not, not so much. Uh, I say uh, you continue uh, making your way. Uh, kind of feels like you're walking in circles, but things still continue to change around you. Uh, you start seeing more permanent structures, uh, brick buildings, uh, often <clears throat> a style that doesn't really seem to be fitting uh, what would seem to be here and. Uh, mm-hmm normal Ellis County fairgrounds, uh, buildings that, uh, start, uh, getting bigger and bigger. Uh, you do, uh, eventually, uh, find, uh, this big brick building with, uh, turrets or uh, yeah, the round columns on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there do seem to be a pair of fairly big individuals standing in front, uh, somewhat, uh, flat, uh, piggish noses, uh, Big brows, orange hair. Mm-hmm. Goblins. Goblins. <laughs> uh, is anybody else like walking in and out at the moment? Um, what's the protocol for when I see people going in and out? They seem to be just uh, walking in and out. Uh, they just kind of give. Just walk in and out. Yeah. No nods, no showing of IDs or anything like that. No, uh, the, you see these individuals kind of, you know, just uh, give them a side eye, but just uh, they seem to be wandering in and out. All right. Then uh, after a few moments, I'll uh, start across and uh, up the steps to the doors. <laughs> As you uh, approach the steps, uh, one of these individuals kind of 
gives you a little growl. Something I can help you with? Ah, yes. I'm just uh, entering the building. Uh, what's your business here? I'm looking for some uh, information. And kind of with a flourish, move my arm so that he can see the the medallion. <laughs> Want to go ahead and give me a mislead, distract, or trick? Sure, mislead, distract, or trick. Let me find it really quick. There it is. Roll with mine. And I roll a 10. I succeed. Ooh, you do succeed. Uh, so, yeah, on a 10 plus, you get to pick three. Uh, options are you create an opportunity, you expose a weakness or a flaw, you confuse them for some time, or you avoid further entanglement. I think I want to confuse them for some time. All right. Okay. They, I think they can't, they can't, don't know whether, they don't know why someone that looks like a human is standing in front of them and why someone would have a glamour up. Yeah. But. They just are like, well, it's a goblin market. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I would like to also avoid further entanglement by just kind of moving on through. Okay. I get to pick three of those, huh? Yeah. So uh, I assume the other one would create an opportunity to move on through. (laughs) Yeah. I think maybe an opportunity to move on through or, yeah, I think that's it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you uh, managed to, with a pretty good role, just... uh, Walk in without any further uh, confrontation mm-hmm. or entanglement. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you Just uh, tip of the hat. Good day, says. Yeah, you walk in and uh, you find yourself in a fairly expansive, uh, multi-level uh, building, just absolutely stocked with books, wall to wall, floor to ceiling. Oh, be still my heart. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> Yeah, it is quite the sight. It seems to be uh, more expensive than one would have guessed by the outside. By the outside, bigger on the inside, huh? <laughs> yep. All right. Mm. Um, well, I am looking for the one book, and I'm sure that it's not in a section called The One Book This Way. <laughs> uh, but I do know that it uh, is in the uh, – it is a dark arts book. Mm. And I don't know if there's a section in the library. I don't know how the library is, is laid out. If it's uh, how their subject material is presented, does it use the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> because that I can understand. It does not seem to. Uh, there seems to be some kind of system with uh, leaves and animals. and. Mm. So now I definitely need to hit the streets then to try to figure <laughs> out what this is. Or maybe Arcane Detective, I guess I could use that too. Because now I am, I'm not talking with an NPC though. But definitely I would want to hit the streets to see if I can track down and and figure out what this information is so I can navigate to the right section. Because I don't want to be caught wandering here for eternity. I think it's uh, not too hard to (laughs) find an individual that seems to uh, be uh, some sort of uh, procurator of this establishment. Uh, you uh, find someone who's uh, very tall, uh, skinny, uh, large hooked nose, uh, gray hair that seems to stick out uh, pretty far on the sides, uh, but bald on top. Uh, very long and thin limbs, including fingers. Hmm. Uh, good uh, day. Yes. I was wondering if you might have a copy of the one book. Uh, on file. Uh, what uh, book would this be? It's called The One Book. On what subject matter? Well, the subject matter can fluctuate depending on the chapter, of course, but it does uh, deal with mostly some of the darker aspects of the arcane. Interesting. Uh, We do have a section in back uh, for such topics. Uh, this would be a very rare book. We could certainly look and see uh, if uh, certain individuals are of the proper inclination to make a good use of this. Oh, I assure you, it's just purely for academic purposes. Uh, that's good. Uh, Not for any harm to anyone. Well, uh, let's see what we can find. Uh, 
All right, so you want to roll me? Uh, did you want to, you're saying hit the streets or the investigator? Um, well, let's see. If I do the arcane investigator, that would probably be uh, best. No, I just see. need to find it on my sheet here. First one, uh, first one is 11. I succeed. Ooh. I hit the button twice. Second one was a 10. I also succeed. So, yeah. I, Someone at least figured out how to roll dice tonight. Yes. <laughs> I think uh, with a bit of uh, talking, you're able to uh, basically uh, pacify his concerns. And uh, yeah, he's able to take you back into the dark arts section uh that seems to be down some stairs and into a somewhat more dimly lit section uh some of the books uh definitely seem to be uh contained uh on chains or within locked cabinets uh, curses but uh there's uh and he he walks up to a cabinet uh pulls out a rather large uh, ring of various keys and opens it up and is like, uh, well, here you go. If uh, you'd like to peruse that, uh, here's a table. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Pull out the book, set it down. I think I can get it from here. Very well. Uh, you enjoy yourself. I will. Pull out my notebook. Now, is this book, is the one book chained? Is it also chained? It doesn't seem to be chained, no. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Pretty sure it will fit in my bag. Well, I will immediately begin reading through this book. Okay. Yeah. Is there any particular information you're looking for here? Uh, right now I'm looking up um, history of containment spells. Hmm. And... Um, and ways to close off portals Enter. or openings or whatever that might be out there. Uh, also, uh, because uh, of the uh, the shears, mm -hmm. I want to do some research and see if the one book has any information on uh, things that absorb power seemingly infinitely. <laughs> Uh, and uh, whatever else I can gain, because this is like the Holy Grail for J.D. Higgins, bottom of the third. <laughs> yeah, I think. And I'm uh, sure, you know, somewhere in the market, I'm sure the Holy Grail is also there. But <laughs> for J.D., this is this is his Holy Grail. Yeah, the guy in the leather jacket and the hat is all over the Holy Grail. So yeah, I think. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> I think you can uh, sit down and uh, dig into this for quite some time, and uh, I think uh, you'll probably be here a while. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've got my <laughs> notebooks. I've got my... my uh, uh, does this, my cell phone work here? No. Uh, you uh, check it, and you find no signal. Can it still take pictures? Yeah. You can... So if I take pictures of the pages, does the, they come out? They seem to be coming out. Okay. Then I will at times take uh, pictures of pages with symbols and imagery and words and uh, and uh, exact phrases of things and store them on my phone. All, All right. the while, every time I take a picture, I look around, though, because I don't want to uh, have anyone see that it's me. <laughs> but it seems like I'm in an area that is fairly secluded or not. I guess I need to look for security cameras. <laughs> you do not see any security cameras. It okay. seems to be pretty secluded. Uh, okay. This uh, does seem to be a section where not a lot of visitors seem to venture into, it would seem. Okay. All right. Then I guess I'm doing research. <laughs> All right. I'm sure so. you don't have the answers to everything off the top of your head, and that may have to wait for another time, but I'm patient. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting 70 years to find this book. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I think uh, you'll uh, sit down and uh, with your nose to the grindstone, uh, make plenty of notes and plenty of pictures and see what uh, perhaps you information mm -hmm. you gather next time. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I yes, there's even, yes, there's some other things that I might want to look up later, but uh, right now this appears to have all the answers that I need. Mm-hmm. 
So it'd be a good time for a break? Yeah, probably. Why don't we take a break this week in the uh, in the action? Come back next week to see what other things shake out at the Goblin Market. Ooh, boy. I predict <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a good idea that uh, JD parked close to the exit. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for checking us out this week's podcast at Majorspoilers.com if you have questions. <laughs> and until next time, here's hoping all of your dice rolls are successes. This podcast is copyright 2018 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.